Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. This is voiceover Stacy. I was once again listening to my book while painting and drawing. I did several paintings and drawings in the sketchbook in one evening. This is one of them. We there was some dead space there where I was digging around for supplies. So I cut that out so as to not bore you. I don't want to bore you. And I decided I'm going to start this drawing. Um, I'm drawing a lantern. That is one of the prompt words of, that I wanted to do. There was a week long list of prompt words that I printed out. Um, and the prompt was lantern. So I'm, I'm drawing a lantern today, starting with ink. And I'm keeping this real time. I don't know that I'm going to be able to talk for 33 minutes. But we'll give it a shot. <laughs> um, I'm using a... I actually have food in the oven as well. So I'm going to have to pause at some point and go get that out. I'm using a Faber-Castell. I'll pull it out here and tell you exactly which one it is. A pit pen in indigo. Hold on. I need my glasses. I think it's dark indigo. Yep, dark indigo. The pen number is 157. If you're interested, it is brush pen. Um, it's a SB, so I'm assuming small brush. <coughs> and I am just practicing drawing. Uh, I want, I'm shooting for this sketchbook to be fun, inspirational, pretty. Um, I'm going to have things glued in, stuck in, drawn on, painted in. Um, but the, the overall theme for me in my head for this sketchbook is for it to be beautiful when, when I'm flipping through. For me to flip through and be pleased with most of the work that's in it. Um, so you'll see probably a lot of whimsical stuff in here and uh, lots of me practicing different ideas and techniques on this paper. I actually have a stash of this paper which is in the light um, tan color which actually not quite sh oh there it is. I was going to say it's I'm not quite sure where it is. <laughs> Tis right here. I'm going to pull it out so I can tell you what brand this is. Oh yeah, I'm not going to be able to say that. This is Leather Village. I'm assuming that's the name of their company. Um, Amazon.com slash Leather Village. So if you want to look up their papers and, and notebooks, you can. It's... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder this. Mujahid. M-U-J-A-H-I-D is the brand. And this is their junior artisan maker of your journal. I think these are supposed to be refill pages, but I just bought the paper because I wanted it. It's their vintage uh, 8x6. And it's a pack of 400 sheets, which is amazing. So I have that plus the sketchbook to play on. Um, and the paper comes in a little cellophane sleeve. I just left it in the in the sleeve, and tucked it on my on my shelf to protect, keep the paper protected because it is very compared to other papers, it's pretty fragile. Uh, it feels like a fabric, uh, a rough, um, like burlapy kind of fabric, but less less green. Um, it's smoother. It kind of feels like um, a coarser 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. That's what it kind of feels like, but it's hand dyed and hand cut because um, none of the pages are this are exactly the size right they're beautiful torn edges which I love that look and then each signature is dyed a different color so I have a blue signature the traditional um, natural brown signature beige cream color and then there's a pinky kind of peach it's more pink to me um, signature and then there's a, a light blue signature so there's a dark blue and a light blue green and then a green signature so this is just super fun to work on the different colors um, 
in the next couple of videos for watercolor uh, Wednesday or I don't even know because I'm doing so many different things in here. But for the next several um, pages that I did in here, uh, I worked on the pink paper and the cream paper. This one I'm working on the very first signature, which is the blue dyed paper. And not each page is dyed evenly either. They're not uniform, which is part of the joy of a handmade paper and a handmade sketchbook is um, you get different depths of dye from page to page and different textures from page to page. Um, and I just, I think that's beautiful. I, there's some darker blues on some pages, lighter blues on others. Some pages feel more textured than others. They have more, um, I don't want to call it debris, but more flex of other things in the paper. And I really enjoy the texture of the paper, especially for this kind of brushed ink work, because uh, it does a lot of the work for you as far as putting in texture is concerned, like the texture of the metal for the light fixture. Um, and I'm using a dark pen because this is, I wanted it to feel like a, a lantern against the night with the light glowing from the inside, right? So, <coughs> sorry. So that's what I was going for here. Having a lot of fun just drawing. I haven't, um, I haven't really practiced my drawing as much this year as I've wanted to, and we're already into March. Um, it's, I don't even know what today is, the second? Yeah, it's March 2nd, and I don't feel like I've worked in my sketchbooks enough. Um, a lot of that has to do with living conditions. I don't have as much free time available to do the things I want to do, because 90% mm, of the week we have a very... Uh, a loud, uh, a attention hungry two year old in the house, two and a half year old in the house. Um, and the normal hours when I would draw, because her mom is home all the time, because she's um, currently on unemployment, uh, between like three and six or seven at night. Uh, I can't really do that because they're listening to music and playing and being rough and rowdy and uh, me getting out Astrid, uh, art supplies while Astrid is up and out. She she just wants to play with, right? So it's not really conducive to sitting down and working on a serious piece or practicing sketching and drawing unless she's fully engaged with her mom and not going to come slamming in asking can I do that too <laughs> and you will see that you'll see her uh, you'll see her come in and and I'll let her join in and play with we do that in the vlog she comes in while I'm um, playing with my my supplies and she joins in which is super fun she's very thrilled I was doing ink alcohol inks on alcohol paper uh, and she was beyond excited and lots of oohs and ahs um i don't remember what we're doing in the vlog i'll have to you know, we'll both have to wait and see at this point it's been too many days since i've filmed footage for the vlog um and it's going to be a beginning of the month vlog and i'm going to do another vlog at the end of the month this month because i'm uh, the beginning of the month vlog is me just uh, playing with Astrid and then uh, I'll give you guys a little update on things and a little bit of FaceTime with me and then I'll show you what I'm doing what I what took over uh, the last the last weekend um, <clears throat> last weekend I didn't do any drawing or painting traditionally I did more bookmaking and playing around with those kinds of supplies um, so yeah, you'll get to see some of that in the vlog, what I've been up to. I didn't film any of the making of the books or anything. I just uh, am doing a little show and tell. So for this, this, I'm trying to get a little shadow in the background, not trying to fill it all in, but because there's reflective light where those glass panels are. So I'm trying to keep my, my 
my touch light on the pen and scrape across the top of the paper to get a little bit of dark background shadows in. Um, really trying to put in the dark darks in the lantern and get the basic shape in. It's very ornate. And now that I'm watching myself draw, the, the little bottom, I don't know what you call it, knobby thing is a little to the right. I could have, I could have centered that up a little better. Um, but once again, I haven't really been sketching and drawing a lot in, in my free time. Uh, today and tomorrow are going to be drawing days. I may end up going over to Starbucks and setting up at a table over there and just filming on my phone in the afternoon, um, or in the morning rather, because my, my son's coming over in the afternoon for dinner and bringing the new puppy. This is a very busy household. Um, trying to get in the, there looks to be like, um, well, the first, the top of the lantern is curved and second, it looks like there's overlapping like leaves or pattern, metal patterning of some sort. Um, it reminded me of, of f folded leaves like draped over the top <coughs> of the lantern. So that's what I'm trying to do here and uh, not get too dark on this side because this is the lighter side and get that shape in there correctly. And I find drawing like this to be super relaxing. I was listening to my book and just not thinking at all about what I was doing and just going for it. And a couple of years ago, I discovered, well, I, I started getting um, ske uh, sketch boxes, sketch box, yes, but um, art boxes, you know, subscribing to the monthly art box thing. Um, and I've bounced from different ones to different ones over the years. <coughs> and I've discovered that I really like um, Sketchbox uh, and Palatful Packs. Palatful Packs is my favorite one. It, it tends to, to be, uh, it's a nice monthly box and it has a, a nice selection of supplies from month to month. I don't really care for acrylic or marker, but when I do get those kinds of supplies in the art box, I will go for it. Um, but my first attempts, <coughs> or my my first few boxes, I got a lot of pens, and I was like, I don't, I don't remember what brand it was, or what box it was offhand, but I don't, I'm not brave enough to draw, like go in first with pen. I'm not, I'm not brave enough to do that. And the art box didn't have cut. It didn't come with pencil. I had to go in with pen, straight out of the gate. And that was for me scary and uh, bold and daring, because I can't erase. There's no adjusting once that ink is down on the page. It's there for ever and ever. <laughs> and uh, it's not forgiving. And. After that, it was it was very stressful and uh, satisfying at the same time. The challenge of it, I, I do like a nice art challenge. Um, so, after getting several boxes and having them be very ink and pen heavy, I, I kind of got a little bold and started sketching in my sketchbooks with and going straight in with ink. And no matter what I'm drawing, if I make a mistake, I just draw over it. Just just draw over it and, and draw over it and draw over it and um, keep going and get get to your finished -ish sketch. And then with a bolder pen, pick out the lines that you really want, that you like, the ones that f are flowing in the direction that you need them to be and maybe drop in a little bit of color. And it, it's a really fun... Um, activity and emboldened me to um, not be so fearful of the pen and I like dark bold lines and I really like the um, I like a soft tipped brush pen and I'm still on the hunt for a really nice one if anyone has uh, the I like a longer bristle or, or a longer tip and I want it to be um, fairly soft um, 
I want it to be bendy. And I haven't, the, the Faber-Castell, this one that I'm using here is not terribly bendy. It's, a, it's kind of medium firm. And I want one that's soft. I want it to be super bendy. I want to be able to get all kinds of different brush techniques and um, really play with the, the, the differences in line weight and texture with the pens. Um, you can do that with, with the Faber-Castell brush pens. I'm not saying you can't. Uh, but it's limited because of the firmness of the brush and you have to kind of use the side of the brush and if you want a heavy heavy line you have to really put that brush down on the page or layer and layer and layer and then yeah so if, if anyone has a beautiful brush pen that they're using that is fairly priced drop it in the comments below the the brand and where maybe where you got it uh and i will look into to picking one up because i'm really have been on the hunt for a nice juicy soft brush pen that gives me like right here I would like a pen that will give me a nice pretty wide line when I sweep up like that and fill in pretty pretty quickly and then at the same time I could get these smaller thin lines and use the edge of the brush with a light light touch to get textures and stuff and then the tip of the brush for that, those super fine lines and pointillism. Because I tend to incorporate cross-hatching and pointillism and general sketching techniques all in one piece. I'm not shy about throwing it all in one piece. And there, there's no rule stating that you have to use one technique and one only. Like if you're doing pointillism, that's what you're doing. And if you're doing hatching and cross hatching that's what you're doing mm, nah. i don't do what i want mix them up blend them together and they create different patterns and, and textures and weight to your piece and here i am skimming the pen on the page just lightly trying to get a wood texture and it, with this paper and this pen it's working out fabulously I'm super happy. I think I went, ooh, a couple times. <laughs> ooh, this is nice. Oh, look at that. Yeah, this this is a fun, relaxing. And I decided I wasn't going to go past the lantern. I was just going to leave the right side of the page light like that. Just leave it alone. Leave a negative space, I guess. Um, and end up changing my mind. And and it's an in in the moment decision. It is very much an in-the-moment decision. And I'm liking the um, the fact that I'm not feeling the need to tape the paper and create fresh borders. It's I'm using the sketchbook as a sketchbook. I'm not worrying about creating actual finished, completed. I mean, I want to, but... I'm using it in more of a let's experiment and and sketch and draw and paint and see what happens kind of kind of thing, and at the same time trying to create uh, decent pieces because when I when I do a flip through through this particular sketchbook I want it to be satisfying for me. So th that's what's in the back of my mind when I choose to draw something in this book or sketch something in this book or paint something in this book. That's what I'm going for. And I put the pen down and I'm. I'm using my beam paints. That's what I have out on the desk right now. I, they're very expensive. Um, but I love my beam paints. I love them. They're amazing paints. And there are, I'm already, um, I already have divots in several of the colors that I'm using regularly. But most of the colors are overfilled, which is beautiful and nice and amazing. Um, but I am definitely using this palette quite a lot. M. Graham is my favorite, but these paints have quickly overtaken my M. Grahams. And I, don't get me wrong, I love my M. Graham paints. I love my core paints, my Mission Gold. I love them all. Um, but for right now, this this is the one that I, I keep gravitating towards. So I'm, this is what I'm using. It also has a bunch of um, mica paint. There's a bunch of... Um, metallic, I guess, um, pearlescent paints with mica in them, uh, which I really like. I like a little bit of sparkle on my page from time to time, and I'm 
just really enjoying that technique like the yellow that you're seeing this orangey yellow is actually the pumpkin spice color with mica in it I'm putting that down first to get the softer like softer glow and the sparkle of the um, I'm looking at the piece right now the sparkle of the mica really looks fun and glittery on the wood behind the lantern and within the lantern so I thought it was fun and right here I am mixing um, Prussian blue and one of the uh, gr gray black colors the noir I guess well no it's not noir do I have my pen so I do have my swatches out and the paints are right next to there we go uh, oh, I'm using the Mars Black and some of the Wintry Night mixed in there as well. Because the Wintry Night has a bit of bronze, brown mica in it. It's this, it's this beautiful um, bronze indigo kind of color. It's, it's really beautiful. And you can get it heavy enough. It, it reads almost black, which is really nice. But I'm mixing those three colors together to get a dark color, but not a black color or a blue color. I don't want to, I'm, I'm just shooting for dark on either side of the lamppost here. Or the wall or wh wherever this is. Maybe it's on the corner of a, of a building. Maybe there's a doorway that opens on either side. But at any rate, it's a little dark on either side. And then I re realized that the bottom and left of the light is not dark enough. It's way too light. I was being too timid. Which I tend to do. I go in timid. And I'm trying to be better about putting in super dark darks. I tend to, s to work light to light medium. And I very rarely work light into light medium and light light darks lighter darks and then dark darks um if that makes sense i, t I tend to not get that full range of light to dark <laughs> i guess is a better way to say that but here i'm doing a little better i i think i feel like i did a better job with this one getting those dark darks in there i, I really am super pleased with the final product um and the lantern on the blue paper with the darks, it it works well together. I could have chosen a darker blue page. I honestly didn't think about it. I was just flipping to the next page in the booklet within the blue section. Um, I have jumped around in the book to do to work on the different colored sheets, which I'm going to do. I'm going to jump around throughout the year in this book. So it won't be chronological, I guess is my point. Uh, when it's finished, hopefully by the end of the year, that'll be really nice um, to have finished piece, like the whole book be finished by the end of the year. That'd be fun. Because then it'd give me reason to buy the bigger version <laughs> for myself for Christmas for next year. <laughs> I do have a plethora of other sketchbooks that we need to fill up as well. So in the evenings, I'm trying to not get lost in bookmaking so much. I, I it, The bookmaking has piqued my interest and really grabbed a hold of me. But it needs I need it to be like a side project from my painting and creating art. Or I, I just don't want it to take over all of my art time because then I'll be dissatisfied with my, with my, my balance of... Uh, time taken from project to project from art projects uh to the bookmaking projects and when i say bookmaking does the little lantern sticker look so cute down there i i <laughs> and honestly um, before getting the sketch boxes it would never have occurred to me to stick in stickers and words and poems and thoughts and things like that into a sketchbook or an art journal. It never would have occurred to me. For me, um, y your sketchbook is for sketching and drawing and for practicing. 
and you know getting out all the ugly stuff so that you can get to a point where you're creating a piece that you feel is not ugly not amazing but maybe not ugly that you're satisfied with and honestly I'm pretty satisfied with most of my work and I don't mean to be boastful I just I feel good about it I, I feel like right here where this this piece is right now I feel good about this it does need self critiquing here darker darks a little more detail in the light area maybe make it look like an actual light bulb without going in with pen and ink without having to go back to that um, but I traditionally use my sketchbooks as a sketchbook to to draw in and I designate like I've last year I designated um, and the year before because I, I I didn't finish any of my sketchbooks that I wanted to in the previous year um, so I still have a sketchbook dedicated to animal life like an wildlife um, and then I have uh, and dogs and cats you know domestic animals as well animals in general um, and then I have another one that is designated expressly to human anatomy um, drawing hands and getting into the nitty-gritty of drawing humans and practicing drawing people of all ages and um, ethnicities and um, doing different activities I like when I'm drawing a person especially for them to be doing something not not necessarily just sitting and posing but actually actively living life doing something uh, at the beach at the coffee shop drinking coffee reading a book chatting with friends that kind of thing um maybe that's what i'll do tomorrow maybe i'll go to the coffee shop and sketch humans that'll be a good idea that's a good idea look at me thinking and stuff um but yeah i i i avoid drawing humans to the point where that sketchbook has barely been touched and uh i need to pull that out and and get rolling on it because once that's filled, A, we can do a flip through, and B, um, I can switch to a different sketchbook. Another reason I don't work in those two sketchbooks as often as I would like to is because I don't really care for how bulky they are. They're um, regular paper sized, so they open up really big, and uh, they have hard covers. I don't mind a hard covered sketchbook, but it may be not so big. Um, and the paper that's in it is just traditional low weight drawing paper it's not really conducive to doing like this kind of work uh, a heavy application of watercolors and ink on top of wa watercolor I do it don't get me wrong I do what I want in my sketchbooks but the paper is not as tough and really not meant for that so yeah so there's me just blathering on about my my sketchbooks and, and what I'm doing in them I have one small green sketchbook that I actually need to pull off the shelf. Um, it's almost full. I've got like a quarter of it left. I'll leave it on the table, I think, uh, to fill up. And I think I'm just going to doodle in that one. Like, do, uh, It's small enough that I could squeeze in drawings while Astrid's not paying attention to, to, to Nana. <laughs> while I'm here for the next couple months. Um, my time will and productivity will change when I get my own apartment or house oh, I'm trying to rent a house I would much rather rent or buy a house but um yeah aside from personal stuff getting back to the drawing at hand I am dry brushing here and this paper is amazing for that technique I see that I got down that texture with almost no work at all a little wet there, a little too wet. Grab more paint, more paint, less water. Something I'm working on, water control. It is an ongoing battle over the last several years. If you watch my earlier videos, I tended to work way too water heavy. Um, and light colors and you know, not enough pigment, not getting enough contrast in my pieces, that kind of thing for me, to me. Um, and over the years, I, I've, I've emboldened myself a little bit, give myself permission to be bold with my colors and to go in 
to these dark, dark areas with dark. You could just do it. Plus, watercolor is going to dry lighter. So much lighter. Um, let me flip back to this piece, actually, and look at it. Yeah. On, uh, dry to smidge lighter. I could probably go in again and do another coat of the dark uh, in the dark areas. I won't, but I probably could. Generally, when I'm done with a piece, I'm I'm done and I've moved on. I'm I'm moving on. This is a practice piece in a sketchbook. Uh, I'm not trying to um, go back and make it a completely finished, amazing piece. Because I kind of like it the way it is. Some pieces are finished and I don't realize they're finished. Like to me, they, they could use a little more work, a little more tweaking. And to others, it's done. Like what are you doing? You're, you're going to mess it up. Leave it alone. <laughs> and I do look for that um, perspective from others. Like I'll go out and ask my daughter you think I should stop here for now or, or, or a little more dark? She's artistic as well. She paints. Um, and sometimes her, her thoughts are very welcome because if I hadn't gone darker or I hadn't um, added this element or not added this element, uh, it wouldn't have turned out as nice as it did. So it's nice to get a, an outside perspective. Sometimes I wish I could talk to you guys directly and be like, "Should we go? Should we? Should we go darker here? Should we? Should we do it? Should we add metallics? No. Yes. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> that kind of thing. Immediate feedback, right? I'm very close to being all done with this piece. I'm just fiddling about right now. Um, try not to get lost in details and letting the textures of the page be the textures of the lantern um, without having to get in all of the fiddly fiddly bits. Let me know what you think in the comments below of, of this painting, of working on this in this book. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I'm all done with this. I'll leave it alone. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!